Alright guys, you know how every week there's like author comments and they leave their comments on the chapter? And for the past couple weeks, <laughs> Oda's author comments have been like, oh, the story's picking up. The story's real serious. Like, oh, it's getting good. It was fun to draw this one. I like to draw this. Uh, th this week, for, <laughs> for the way he ends this chapter, this fucker had the audacity <laughs> to have his author comment be like, everybody listen up. Chips and sandwiches are the perfect combo. <laughs> the only thing worse would have been Oda saying, like, Kiku's all right this week. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I think the, 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 the worst case scenario I can think of is, like, he if he had dropped, like, some kind of food hot take. And, like some kind of terrible food opinion and then the, the chapter ends the way it does this week it'd be some shit like i i can't even think of like a really contentious food hot take that... right like we've all heard the pineapple on pizza i feel like the one of the most contentious ones would be uh cereal or milk first pineapple oh my god great. if oda oda fucker posted get like guys it's time to settle the score Milk goes first, and then just the final panel. <laughs> like, <laughs> oh man, God, that's ridiculous. Uh, <laughs> Ad Adrian would like a moment. Pineapple on pizza is great. Speak Pina up. Really? Yeah, speak up. Pineapple on pizza is great. <laughs> <laughs> no, I feel bad. Um, yeah, Adrian's got the shit. Like, we don't know. It's probably a sinus, like, cold like or something cold, like that. Yeah. But she feel she's been sniffling here and there, sneezing all the time. And so uh, she's she's out for this week. Um, so it, it's horny. just me and John. No <laughs> horniness. Uh, I'm either going to have to be wholesome enough to cancel out the residual horny or carry the horny on my back <laughs> and be horny for both of us no i mm, i don't know <laughs> I, I can't have it all coming from one person yeah, that's dangerous no no single human can carry all that horny <laughs> no, see, no single body can can contain that much horny don't <laughs> Did you just say don't challenge me? Yeah, Adri like ran in saying don't <laughs> challenge me. She's energetic enough to run around. She's <laughs> just worried about the like possible like terrible audio. I, I feel that. Um, she was also got to go to sleep. Uh, that too. Hey, we're Paramecia, a One Piece fan cast where we review the latest chapter of One Piece and have a different One Piece related discussion every single week. My name is John. My name is Franz. And, uh, oh boy, this week was a week. I got messaged on Saturday, and one of our mutual friends was like, oh, did you read this week's chapter? It's pretty good. And I was like, fuck, it comes out tomorrow. Please, please don't spoil it. Like, I'll, I'll read it tomorrow. And oh, so, does it? Does he read spoilers? I, 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 I guess he had, yeah. I guess so, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um, but anyways, I read the chapter on Sunday. And he didn't spoil anything. He had just said, oh, this this week, like, it made up for the short chapter last week. And I was like, dang, all right. Like, it's, it's going to be good. You know, getting through the, the whole chapter. Yeah, pretty good. Uh, reading it on my lunch break. The final panel hits and I like, fucking slammed my table. <laughs> I, was like, I was like, no. It's suffering. Yeah. Oda's designed this specifically to say fuck you to me. Yeah. <laughs> specifically to say fuck you to you. Um <clears throat> hell yeah. No, it it was it was a really good chapter though. I mean, shit's we kind of, you know, we'll get to it, but everybody sort of expected like, yeah, it's going <laughs> to it's going to get a lot worse and then uh, you know, cuz we're probably heading towards the end of act 3 soon. Yeah. It's definitely ramping up real hard. Yeah. But uh we'll get the look, first things first, let's cover the cause it's still not over, I'm surprised. Uh the cover story, volume Gang Beige's Oh My Family, Volume 36, Godi and Lola's wedding. So they get Dude, married. 
which is cute. About like time. This. Yeah. <laughs> like, I'm so glad that we we get to not not the confirmation cuz we've known, but we get to see Lola happy. Yeah. Like this after how uh man crazy she'd been. Yeah. We get to see Lola happy. I love her little homies on the right hand side, like popping party poppers and stuff. Her crew. I love Pez balancing on one foot on 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 his grandpappy's uh head. Oh, there he is. <laughs> Dude, he's consistently been like praise the sun. Yeah. <laughs> What was the bit, preacher Pez? Little Pez, he's uh, he's it just God bless us, everyone. <laughs> just comes out. Oh man, Pez is what? Pound, what pound, a good boy. Pound gets to see he missed his first do- his other daughter's wedding. She phones wedding, and he finally gets to see his daughter get married. And I think that's just fucking cute. And it's beige, what they it's all just, deserve. <laughs> big, big grinning. It's so nice to see. I I can't... This seems like such a good bookend that I can't possibly conceive, like, what would be the uh, end of this. Yeah, I have no idea. Um, I don't know. I don't even know how they'd get to Wano if they're going to end up there. The only thing I can think of if they're, like... Uh, so, like, the beginning of Wano, Luffy, like... <laughs> lost he like lost his Viver card in the ocean oh right <laughs> the only thing i could think of is like this shit ends with them just finding luffy's Viver card in the ocean they're like oh fuck <laughs> like, how would they know it's his though th- that i have i have no idea look I, man, come on man. you're not here for the for the like <laughs> I'm, for the the I'm, I'm an ideas guy right? <laughs> okay the ideas no, no, guy no. i get it i get it <laughs> i'm not worried about the cost or how it's gonna happen or how it makes sense man i just throw shit out there dude i'm the average fucking yeah here i'll do it again. i'm the average uh one piece comment section uh uh blackbeard's gonna eat shanks Moving on, yeah. <laughs> we open up straight with the the flower capital right at night at the like in the heart of the Grand Fire Festival. The whole city's popping off. Everyone's like having a good old time. And we get a a narration saying the flower capital here in the flower capital, the lone place that flourishes in Wano. The smiles of the people cover up the fears and pressures that lurk behind them. And you got some like performer like going around. Yeah, the performer kind of looks like the the old hag that was oh, behind yeah, yeah. Uh, Orochi and shit. And it, it continued. They were able to survive because of the furtive relief that the country would be saved by the Kozuki samurai one day. A legend that seemed plausible enough to support their faith. And you know, someone's playing taiko. Everyone's out there. Some ladies playing the flute. And there's a giant fucking float of odin yeah bursting through i fucking love it yeah it's like odin but he's got like fiery hair Um, it's the the plight the platonic ideal of odin (laughs) yeah 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 basically it really it looks uh with the way the hand is and stuff it's kind of it's kind of got a little gear fourth uh oh yeah it looks kind of like gear fourth for sure for Um, sure which is cool because I know even what's his face had mentioned in another chapter, um, Hyoguro, old man Hyo, he saw Luffy go gear forth against like I forget, I forget who. I don't think it was Queen. It was like in the fight or whatever. But he saw Luffy go gear forth and like attack somebody, and he said that Luffy looked like a garden, a uh, guarding. Oh, the guardian, guardian deity. deity. Yeah, it was something <laughs> like very recent. Yeah, it's pretty recent, and uh, I think this this float of Odin looks similar to that. And I'm like, oh shit, that's so cool though. Yeah, I love this scene because everyone's like partying, and you see the little girl like, I wish this day would never end. And even like Minatomo like won't have another drop to drink for an entire year once this festival's over. And uh, you like turn the page, and they they keep talking, and because all of the Beast pirates and everybody and are on Onigashima. Like all the factories are off, 
nobody's fucking with them the, so like for one day a year they get like to just party as normal people and like the air is clean and nobody gets killed <laughs> and, and like everyone's so allowed fucked. in the flower capital too yeah <clears throat> The wa- they get to drink clean water, like, Jesus, like, that's a day of luxury. That's fucking wild. Um, everyone's, like, partying, and they're like, oh, sing, dance, enjoy yourself, for today is the fire festival. Completely juxtaposed to fucking what's going on in Onigashima, which, by, by the way, the, the people, too, are like, uh, like, oh, I think the Kosuke clan's battle is happening right now. Like, I bet they recruited warriors from all over the world. And they're like, yeah, they're going to slice up Orochi and Kaido. Uh, like, oh, yeah, we're going to, like, they're going to win. <laughs> Immediate cut to everything going to shit. Dude, it's, the the thing is, like, what they're also, like, getting at, too, is the, you, you get to see the, the lay people's, like, beliefs and there's like one like bumbling guy who's just like sitting there like you know what i think i think the kozaki clan's battle is happening right now yeah it's something he probably says every year yeah oh i bet they recruited warriors from all over the world to help <laughs> and and some other like lady like pitches in and is like oh they went to onigashima and sliced up orochi and kaido and raised hell it's <laughs> it's so sad to see that yeah all of them were like expressing all of this and like it it was a moment where Odo was like oh these are the stakes this yeah. is what's at line at like what's at stake hey you guys see these people uh <laughs> they're like alpha fucked <laughs> <laughs> if luffy does not win this they will all fucking suffer yeah it makes it reminds it even me worse of uh, too cuz uh Oh, sorry, go ahead. Oh, this is, like, a very small tangent, but, um, in, so, like, tabletop games, like, uh, our RPG specifically, like, D&D, there's one, the, the Powered by the Apocalypse system is pretty interesting to me, because it's, like, pretty, like, simple, uh, but to, to create stuff and to play as well, and one of the things, like, if you are a game moderator or, like, master or whatever the fuck, um, creating like monsters like you basically envision a big bad for your setting like there can be multiple big bads but there's basically like a doomsday timer and so like every time like the the hour clock moves so to speak it's a metaphorical timer uh like if some action happens if if the heroes quote unquote of the story don't do something then the hour clock moves and then something bad happens and it like supposed to escalate. So it, this oh, feels shit. kind of like what a good GM should do and yeah. like randomly tell you about like, Oh, like the people in the town, la di da, like, you know, I'm going to name them. So you get very, uh, attached to them just like yeah. Minotomo. And, uh, oh, look at him. He's funny. He's got nails up his nose. What a wacky character. <laughs> you sure him? hope he doesn't fucking life, die. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Be a shame if the guy from volume two fucking ate it, wouldn't it? Oh shit. Oda. <laughs> so I th- personally, I think it's, a very like, I know we're like pressed for time, but it's a good break to have cause it's still productive to the narrative. No. Yeah, for sure. For sure. Um, especially cause I like, it ties back to what I was going to say initially. Cause it's, it's, uh, I mean, remember he, he's showing us all this, but Kaido, when he fucking like, <laughs> when he grabbed King's sword and just fucking murked Orochi in front of everybody, he was like, yeah, like samurai, you either work for me now or I'll kill you. And everybody in the city is just going to become a slave for like the factory. Like we're just going to fucking ramp up production so it's like well shit like they're all partying now but they have no idea that kaido is just like usurped full control it's literally like they're always used to like every year like partying it out but they don't know that this is like for real for real the fucking last one for literally everyone yeah it's uh oh god (laughs) sucks yeah (laughs) It's one of those things where, like, I read it, and then it went back to the 
the fighting and like you get to see our characters but you see the way the fight is going and stuff and it's like oh shit <laughs> yeah it's really rough because like we go we go straight back in and every everyone's like on the like first floor ish um actually we we get an actual clarification it's the basement floor the first yeah. basement floor everyone's like running around this is like where the stage was like yeah. under the stage where everyone used to be before they like split up and everyone's like running around and this and that and <laughs> zoro's like oh what's that you just see some figure like holding a sword with horns looking completely frosty grabbing others and you get x drake like informing us explicitly that was queen it was really a plague and yeah. everyone's like oh i'm cold oh i'm turning into an oni how would i know that i don't I have a mirror in front of me so how would i be able to see the <laughs> yeah, horns? Like oh god i'm being infected as if i'm turning into an ice oni <laughs> specifically same way as if Mario, when he eats a blue mushroom, he knows that he will turn into an iced Mario. Yeah, oh, I too oh. know that I will turn into an ice Oni. Oh, it's intuition. God. It is me, Mario. I'm about to eat this blue mushroom and become ice Mario. <laughs> it's it's a a bit of a drastic scene as like everyone's like Chopper especially is like yeah. like oh shit and. Uh, Queen, the asshole that he is, says, close the doors to every tower. This floor is finished. This is the shining jewel of my playgrounds, Ice Oni. And uh Fuck. I'm not that um like it sucks because like a lot of the cannon fodder, unfortunately, like that's what they are. A lot of the grunts yeah. on both sides are being fucked and like needlessly, but Let's not forget that Chopper had no problem taking care of uh, that other plague that Queen made. Yeah, yeah, I, I and Chopper like verbatim was like, "Oh, the antidote was like easy to find for the old one." So I would like, I would like to see Chopper uh, out plague Queen the plague. <laughs> oh, that'd be that'd be some shit, especially because like it's not just Chopper here. Law and Marco are also here, yeah. Which we'll we'll, we'll get to in a bit, but like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Every mention just tears. Um, but you know, yeah, we'll it we'll we'll get can't to be that, that bad. <laughs> yeah, I'm, not, I'm not I'm not particularly concerned. Yeah, I mean, on this floor with the ice onis, it's like Chopper, Chopper, Robin, Zoro, and X Drake. And it's like, all right, I am not worried at all. <laughs> like, between Zoro and x alone, fuck, between all four of them alone, like, Chopper's gonna somehow cure this or find the antidote. And then Zoro and Drake could take on, like, I think both of them could probably take on Queen. I don't know if they'll- Now I got some, uh, yeah, they could beat him. food for thought real quick. Um, if Robin were to, uh, do her expand arms- and arms everywhere, you know, like the the hit fighting game yeah. for the Nintendo Switch arms. Yeah. Uh, if she were to do her thing, and then she gets bit by the ice oni, but it's one of her extendo oh. arms. Does Robin Robin get fucked, or is it just that's the true. extent? Like, can I can she pull a uh, a SpongeBob? You know how like SpongeBob can just like cut off his limbs and then regrow them. Yeah. So like, like that, I'm thinking. Of like a like a like a Naruto Shadow Clone Jutsu situation, like right, right, right. If her arm gets, if her extendo arm somewhere gets infected, and she like stop, let she like retracts the power. Does everything that happened to that arm come back to her, or is it just like I'd like to think it's just like nothing? Like, oh, fuck it, it just yeah, like whoa, whoopsie. I'd I'd hope so. Yeah, but uh, I guess we'll get that answer soon. All right, it's the, you, you literally, I was, I was the guy that had the t-shirt that said no fear, and then you brought that up with Robin, and now my shirt is <laughs> one fear. <laughs> you know, that's one of those memes where, like, you'd never expect the original to be funnier than any other possible permutation. Yeah. <laughs> but, uh, 
the original of that meme um says like it, it's some random guy with like sunglasses he's like smiling and he's basically t-posing and his shirt says no fear and then some like guy comes in from another panel who says like um what if they made simpsons porn illegal and then it cuts back to the guy with the sunglasses. <laughs> He's frowning, and it says one. His shirt changes to one fear. That's the original text. That, of that I meme. I shit you not. That's the original. <laughs> what if they made Simpsons porn illegal? <laughs> like, oh god! That <laughs> of all the versions of that meme. If you had asked me what the original was, that would have been the last answer I would have given. And it's like, there's no possible better answer either. Oh, yeah. (laughs) It's too good. Oh, oh God. Uh, (laughs) So uh, we get, we get, going back to it, we get a map of the, the floor situation. We're on first basement level, and we see Luffy kicking people, and he's like, get out of the way. And then we see Sanji grab Luffy's face, and he's like, wait, Luffy. And then he does party table kick course, and he just fucking spinning bird kicks like everybody with the fire. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, we get a new gifter, and he says, hey, you, you'll pay for what you did to my guys. Prepare for a beatdown. Ook, 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 (laughs) ook. Why is the gorilla growing out of there? (laughs) And <laughs> it's Animal Kingdom's headliner, Bris- Briscola, Gorilla Smile Fruit. And it's a normal, muscular guy. And on his left hand, his left fist is where from the, the gor- forearm up. Yeah, like, his left forearm, from the forearm, is where the gorilla's torso and like like begins and it's, he has a a whole ass like silverback gorilla growing out of his fist and like he makes the point like you know they they basically call him a freak of nature straight to his face and he he calls him out on it and it's like oh you're a couple of wise guys uh huh then yeah. why don't you tell me how a gorilla is supposed to grow as he like reels back his like gorilla fist and his gorilla fist is basically like prepping up some punches he's like ora 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 kind of shit yeah and fucking Saj he's like how the fuck should I know <laughs> Oh, God. Gorilla punch punch is, I think, my favorite technique in this whole, in this whole manga that's ever been used. Gorilla punch punch. Oh. And Sanji's like, wow, that's pretty powerful. And f- of course, Luffy. He's like, there's a bunch back there. I'll take care of them. And Sanji's like, dude, you fucking doofus. Like, how many times do I have to tell you to conserve your strength for Kaido? It'll take too long to handle all these guys alone. And he's like, shut up. Is Ooh. 10 seconds too long for you? I'll do it in three. <laughs> Just art. Dude, like, Sanji not- getting called a fucking scrub. <laughs> Sanji is just like, you fucking idiot. Like, we're, <laughs> we're up against fucking Kaido. You should probably save your strength for gear five, you bitch. And he's like, I'll do it in gear three seconds. <laughs> Luffy's a dumbass. Oh, we love him. Yeah, we love him. They're quickly cut off, though, like, Fishman Karate, Shark Brick Fist, and you just see Briscola, like, launched against the fucking ceiling. <laughs> He's hit with the, uh, oh, what's what's the, the ancient fucking meme? It was, uh, when Marvel 3 was announced, and they were, like, announcing characters, there was a meme that was, like, put Sagat in Marvel vs. Capcom 3. And everybody was like, Sagat's too normal for that game. Like, he wouldn't fit. And then somebody was like, (laughs) Sagat's tiger uppercut ceiling bounces. (laughs) 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 Which, in in fighting games, if somebody's, if you guys aren't aware, like, you know, there's, there's wall bounces, like moves that are like, you'll hit the wall and you'll just bounce off. And then like ground bounces where you'll bounce off the ground. There is no ceiling in the map, so there's no such thing as a ceiling bounce, but this guy was so, so caught up on the juice, he was just like, fuck it, this moves ceiling bounces. And that's what Jimbei does, Jimbei ceiling bounces briskola. 
<laughs> fucking gets him out in one blow, and he's just like, "Oh, Luffy Sanji, I figured you would. F- I figured I would find you here." And L- Luffy's <laughs> just hiding. <Jimbei! laughs> like, oh I, man, there was Dude, an Jimbei artist- coming in saying, "Sanji, you're a scrub." <laughs> No, Jinbei, I love the dynamic. Jinbei is just like fucking. I love Jinbei's dynamic. This whole arc when he's been with the the Straw Hats. His he's a dad dad di- who's his also an intern. Is like, yeah, the dad that's like co- that is completely brand new to the crew dynamic. Because <laughs> he's like, oh, I'm getting you up to the roof. You must conserve your power. And then Sanji's like, hey, who put you in charge? I'm the one dragging Luffy along. Oh, you are? I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> like, genuinely. Absolutely yeah. genuinely just like, oh, shit, sorry. <laughs> oh, God. But uh, Sanji and Jinbei are like, oh, the samurai should have reached the top of the battlefield. We ought to head there. How do you know everything that's happening? Watch out, because if Luffy gets a chance to fight, he'll take it. I'll keep that in mind. While they're saying that Luffy is like throwing a kick to somebody else while they're not looking, <laughs> dude, he's got to he's got to get his shit in real quick. Yeah, he, he knows. Oh fuck! All right, Dad. <laughs> Gosh, <laughs> but like my favorite thing is like Sanji saying like, "Watch out, because if Luffy gets a chance to fight, he'll take it," as if like. <laughs> It's how, like, a rich person would, like, talk to a dog sitter about their dog. Yeah. He gets one one whiff of that toy, and it's done for. <laughs> Dunzo. He sees that toy once, and it will never leave his line of sight again. But we cut over to... Well, we cut over to Yamato, and you see, like, the little... uh Oh, my God. I fr- It's... It's who's who. Yeah, who's on first? His little cat. No, isn't that Bagua's? Ba- ba- Bao Huang's. Isn't that Bao Huang's? Um, oh, yeah, it is Bao Huang's. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Who's who's on the bottom panel? That's, I, I could yeah, 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 yeah. Bao Huang's, like, little cat is there. <laughs> I love, it's the cat, but it has the little paper <laughs> with the eye over it. <laughs> the, the like, Sheikah eye from, Le- from, from <laughs> yeah. Legend of Link. Wow. Legend, Legend of Link. Legend of Twink, am I right? <laughs> I, man. <laughs> Anyways, they're getting that. Live that one's updates. for Adri. Yeah, that one's for Adri, yeah. Um, they're getting live updates. And Bao Hong is like, Yamato and Momonosuke pass through the right brain tower. They're heading to the outside. And then King gets on the Den Den Mushi. He's like, this is King. Enemy strength is about 5,400. Most of them are samurai rallying around Odin's vassals. In other words, this is a rebellion of the Kozuki clan to restore their house to power. They seek to place Odin's son, Kozuki Momonosuke, upon the shogun's throne of Wano. Kill Momonosuke and bring his head to me. That will break the will of the samurai to fight. Uh, the pirates will be a separate matter, of course. Momonosuke's current location is... And you just see Yamato, he's like, Hey, wait! <laughs> <laughs> fucking Shinobu's like, give it a rest! Dude, it's so fucking funny. Like, the the whole dynamic. But it's very interesting to see, like, King saying all of this is marking the the end of the element of surprise. Yeah. Because we, we've had the element of surprise for quite a few chapters now. Yeah. And, like, sure, like, Kaido and everyone's on the roof. They've been on the roof for a bit. But, like everyone's equally on the same page now and uh shit's gonna get uh heavy yeah for fucking sure the tables they are returning uh literally as soon like as soon as king finishes saying that like sasaki's like got it found him and all of his homies he's like take aim fire and they fucking blast uh shinobu yeah they blast shinobu and shinobu is like she uses her body to block Momonosuke from getting hit. And she, like, jump flips out of there. She, like, forward flips. Yeah. And then she realizes there's, like, several arrows also going at her. And then midair turns to catch those with her back to protect Momonosuke. Yeah. Like. She, she is just, oh, God. 
<laughs> she literally hits the fucking backwards long jump. <laughs> Oh man! Oh god! She she wasn't quite QPU aligned, so she couldn't she couldn't hop dimensions with Momo. She didn't raise her de facto speed high enough. Yeah, it was one whole A press. It wasn't a half. <laughs> She's not Hot that damn. good yet. No one knows what we're talking about, yeah. <laughs> but it's okay. You don't need to know. You're better off not knowing people. Don't search it, up. It, the worst thing is don't for search those up of you Mario sixty four half a press on YouTube. Don't. For those of you who do know without context, I have watched that video so many times where I think I understand. Yeah. Oh God, it's it's wild. You thought One Piece theory crafting was bad. <laughs> oh, but, wait uh, for Mario sixty four. Uh, but anyway, quantum I dig- theory. <laughs> I digress. Mario Shinobu's 64 like, quantum theory crafting. <laughs> I know. <laughs> Shinobu yeah. gets got and Momonosuke looks up. He's concerned for her like, "Oh shit. Yamato's a little like in the dark. He's in the like little smoke from all the explo- explosions going off." Yeah. And Sasaki tells her to stay out of it. And some fucking Gimli from Lord of the Rings <laughs> rushes in. Gimli with Lord of, from Lord of the Rings with a turtle for a, a dick. A turtle? <laughs> I just know. Why does he have a turtle dick? Because his 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 he's like a centaur, but the bottom feet are like instead of horse body for centaur, it's turtle body. But like all of the turtle body, head included. Yeah, yeah. Like he's growing out of the shell, and then the turtle head is just fucking turtle cock that looks so bad like yeah. not, not like not like bad bad but like oh, oh, i will bad. say on, on my first read through like i just saw gimli and i was like oh shit and my axe like that's good. <laughs> like that this is yeah, weird but okay yeah. like i guess they just have gimli on their side and it's it is right now and i just noticed the fucking turtle lower half Dude, you're telling me till you brought it up, I was in the dark about it. Yeah. <laughs> Absolutely oh. nuts. And then poor Shinobu on her last legs tells Momonosuke to run. And very chef kiss. The he doesn't run. What he thinks about is run. Is that what a shogun would do? And from downtown, Yamato comes in, smacking Gimli with a cudgel. if you want to Yo, remember in Lord of the Rings when Gimli got Gimli got alpha fucked by by fucking uh an oni with the club? That was my favorite part of Return of the King. Yeah, dude, it's the actually the best part. Actually, you know, Yamato, d- like, blasting Gim- Turtle Gimli and, like, saving the day is literally, like, I just want to respond on Twitter with the title card of Return of the King. <laughs> oh, the, the, the ye old Twitter classic, hey, King, you dropped this. <laughs> like, Damn. I love, uh, we get Sasaki on, like, his weird throne, like, so he's, like, on, okay. He's on a rhinoceros, kind of. Because I've, I, I, again, first read through, I just looked at all these character designs. He's on a cool. rhinoceros man. Yes, one of his soldiers is a rhinoceros man. Uh, and Sasaki has a chair on the on the rhinoceros's ass, as if the rhinoceros is li- like, and it's got like fire. Co- I don't. It's as if he's riding him like a motorcycle, or like like. His throne reminds me of uh, the guy in Mad Max Fury Road. Yeah. With the guitar. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's what his throne reminds me yeah. of. Yeah. This entire thing is Mad Max vibes. Like, the, the, the gifter on the front, like, the gifter is the guy with the guitar, like, strapped to the thing. And Sasaki's, yeah. like, in the driver's seat. Um, Fuck. We've seen one of these guys before, like, the the stag beetle looking fuck. But there's yeah. one dude who's like straight up just like in a tube. Yeah. He he's got like a hoodie pulled all the way up, but he it also looks like he's got no neck. Yeah. We've got 
I don't know. Um, we've got a porcupine. No, sorry, it'd be a hedgehog. Yeah. It, uh, a hedgehog gifter who's just like spiky all the way around, and mm-hmm. his crotch says uh, "hari," as in "hari nezumi," the the Japanese word for hedgehog. But let's call him Harry. Yeah, Harry. <laughs> Harold. Harold. Harold the Hedgehog. <laughs> and um <laughs> this uh this lady, he's, he's she's some bi. sort of fucking <laughs> my my Sonic the Hedgehog OC <laughs> Harry the Hedgehog bye. Um but yeah, the this crustacean lady. Don't know fuck about crustaceans, but she's got big meaty claws and also regular arms for which with which to hold guns yeah she's got big meaty claws and then like if that wasn't enough like so crabs from what i understand use their claws to like like kill the prey so they can eat it uh she uses her claws to to grasp her prey and then just fucking blast it in the face with a fucking <laughs> fist a flintlock <laughs> like as as most crabs are to do, you know, uh, what is it? The rainbow mantis, the rainbow mantis shrimp. I think it's a, oh. it's a shrimp. It's but it's, it's there's there's a fucking small shrimp. Is it the one with that a can, gun? Like, punch so fast that it like it's not that it punches. It's like if it closed its hand because what it is is like it's got a fucking like hyper thumb. And so when it closes its thumb so quick, it pressurizes the water and basically creates, like, a pressure bullet of, like, with, like, temperatures reaching, like, a thousand degrees or some shit. It was, like, some crazy stuff. Yeah. Something that if it was, like, scaled up even remotely more than what it is now. Yeah. It would be a menace. <laughs> I, that's that's the devil fruit I want. <laughs> Oh yeah, the mantis shrimp, mantis shrimp, no me. Yeah, <laughs> model, fuck you, model thumb. <laughs> but the 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 whole the whole shit from this scene is Sasaki looking down at Yamato, saying, "So you intend to interfere with this, young master Yamato?" And he he's confident as fuck. He's he's out here saying, "I'm not interfering. I'm fighting for Kozuki." <laughs> bang bang. <laughs> Yamato's on the right team. Yamato's on the right side of history. He knows. Exactly. Um, but, oh god. We get Yamato's confidence. Immediate juxtaposition to immediate camera switch to a top of the skull dome. Kaido is, like, laying there. Like, his scar is, like, bleeding out. And all the samurai are rushing him. They're like, sever his windpipe. Stop his breathing. The fight is not over until his head is severed. And Kaido just starts talking, and this, like, okay, I was hyped last chapter when they took it to Kaido, but also I was like, all right, you know, this isn't the end, I fully expect Kaido, like we talked about, like, Kaido is gonna, at some point, the hybrid form reveal is gonna come, like. And it is gonna be soon. Yeah, it's gonna be soon, but, uh, like, we knew Kaido was gonna get, like, a second wind, and he, he might fuck up the samurai. But, uh, oh god, <laughs> he starts going on with this speech, and I, I was so hyped for this speech, because it was just so good. It was so good for Kaido. He was like, in your spirit, I saw the visage of Kozuki Odin. I could have let you kill me. And all the sam like, as Kaido is, like, getting up slowly from the ground, he's like, with each, with each throb of my scar, and we get a flashback to when they tricked odin and and kaido like you know struck him him down like struck him upside the head like hit him with the cheap shot and we we get such a good character moment for kaido where he's like like the respect that he has for odin is just off the fucking charts like you could that moment we talked about it when that happened in the chapter like that moment i've been told you he's fucking feeling guilty about it yeah that moment fucked him up but this like and now we're getting to see it like in real time dude it's like, like oh. it, it went against his his ninja way kaido's a bastard but he still has his ninja way yeah yeah oh, man and it's it's just like with each throb of my scar i remember and it's just funny that's like his eyes are like shaded over like 
he doesn't remember <clears throat> like like the thing that sticks out most to him is like he o- like the scar he got from Odin and then the only reason he beat him was because of this like cheap shot and it's so f- it's so fucking good like character development for Kaido and he says but you people are not Odin we will never see a monster samurai of his like ever again and he Kaido like gets straight up and he says it is too shallow you don't have enough power to open up this old scar you cannot do it and he breathes in and he just hits the fucking dragon breath like and uh and then we get the last couple panels where you see the (gasps) rocks getting sliced up and Danjiro's like invisible slashes and then immediate cut to Kiku her sword is sliced off like the the sword like hilt like an inch of blade and the rest of it is just gone and so is her arm (laughs) like completely and like you know uh izo and kinemon call for her and like her eyes go like white not like dead white but like yeah almost there like no pupils just suffering oh man and uh that's where the chapter ends. Next chapter hits November. We're not on break. I'm so glad that Oda did not fucking <laughs> like Jesus. Right, like you know, sure, sure. Like Kiku is not for sure dead, but like dismemberment is quite a fucking big deal. Yeah, I, I, yeah. I, this is the, the the bit. This is like this panel and then just Oda's comment for this week like chips and sandwiches are the best combo it's like fuck off dude <laughs> like, <laughs> milk goes before the cereal yeah 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 <laughs> jesus but uh, yeah we we had talked about it before recording but like i i i don't of all the characters to die i don't think kiku is dead not just because i really like kiku as a character but right it's like of all the characters, of all of the samurai, like, uh, so it, it's kind of been talked about before in, like, the One Piece community, and we've t- definitely t- talked about it before. Like, when Oda chooses to kill a character, um, you know, I, oh, Pound got brought back, I, Pound aside, like, when he chooses to kill a character, well, no, taking Pound's, like, original scene into account, like, it's a character that we have, like, spent a, time with we've spent we've spent a lot of time with and like there's actual stakes to like you know we, we we know them more than just a side character and uh like like their death has has meaning it's it's not like a character that just dies for wow factor and as much as i love kiku um kiku's death i don't think would have like i don't think it would have that big of an impact as opposed to like you know, Kinemon, or, like... Right. Like, Dan- Danjiro, or one of them. Because, like, Cause... we've gotten a l- I mean, we've known Kinemon for, like, so long. Right. And, like, we've known Danjiro less than Kiku, but we we had a flashback specifically for everything he's gone through. Yeah. So, we feel closer to him, and, like, we see where his stakes are at, not to say that Kiku does not hold the same like will and the same stakes. Yeah. But yeah. Kiku, on the other hand, has been um, you know, it's really cool to see her. Like at, like I'm speaking of out of transness, like really cool to see her. Would if Oda were to kill her off like this, personally, I think it's bad writing. Yeah. Um it oh, also falls sure. under a trope that I don't maybe some listeners may not have heard of it's called the bury the gays trope where like there's so few gay characters or like lgbt uh characters in modern media or prominent modern media so to speak that it's the kind of thing where like if they're there and there's a potential for them to die they'll probably die um a good example is uh the adventure zone the mcelroy's uh D &D podcast the first season they they like they basically like killed the only two gay characters they had uh, for like for three seasons being around only two gay characters they had killed them off it it was touching this and that but it, like everyone was kind of like 
you killed the gays like that? Yeah. <laughs> they pulled a little, like, sorry, oopsie, and, like, basically, <laughs> yeah. like, you know, rectified a few things. But yeah. I'd be disappointed if Oda did something similar. But that aside, I think that Kiku so far has only kind of been a gag of, like, tall samurai woman. Um, oh, look, she's hiding behind Zoro. Oh, look, she can kill, too. And, like... Yeah, like, we've seen her fight, but in terms of, like, a backstory, like, okay, yeah. we, we saw her and Izo's backstory. Like, you know, they were orphans, and Odin took them in. Right. But it's like, you know, you compare that to... We got uh, more characterization of Izo in that yeah, flashback. Yeah, you compare that to Izo, who was then brought with Odin on Whitebeard's ship, and we got to see his relationship to Whitebeard. And, like, the, enti- the entire beginning of the Odin flashback centered around Kinemon and Denjiro, uh, and we got to see a lot of, like, Ashura Doji. Um, like, char- characters, like, w- we haven't gotten that moment with Kiku just yet. Like I honestly I would say her and like her and Rizo are probably the two characters whose like backstories we just haven't like touched I, I, on. I feel like really. we ju- we just haven't had a lot. It's just sort of like yeah, they're sa- they're they're part of the nine scabbards, but we haven't gotten like, you know, the real the real one piece flashback for them, you know. Right. Like it, it was also by the same process where we like basically like just narrative our way around figuring out that Conjuro was the traitor yeah because he had nothing going for him we literally like oh they just found him <laughs> like yeah <laughs> you know nothing really special about that so it yeah. has to be him and yeah. so now we have the whole traitor shit out of the way it's kind of like um the bottom three I would say from bottom from bottom up would be like Rizo and Kiku tied maybe. Yeah. Cause they're kind of like just as like not e- like they're equally not um explained as much. And then yeah. right above them would be Kawamatsu because like we did get the bits of like racism in Wano, but yeah. we got the bits of racism, but I honestly feel like with Kawamatsu, if he was to die, Hiori would I feel like Hiori would have to be there when it happens. Right, right. Because that's, you know, they have that sort of connection. Um, exactly. But, yeah, I, I mean, I, I, I don't think Kiku is dead. Um, I think she's, I'm going to say the joke again, all right. <laughs> oh, you fucker. <laughs> um, oh, fuck. I will say... Um, Law and so Law and Marco are both on Wano right now. They're both in Onigashima right now. Um, I don't know where Law is. I can only assume. I can only assume that Law and Kid and Luffy are all heading towards where Kaido is. Right, though it's been a bit since we've seen Law. Yeah, I for I forget where he was when we last saw him. He he split up with the the samurai. The samurai went like one way around, yeah. and he said, "Okay," but he was like on land with them. Yeah. So like, Law Law's fruit could reattach the arm. Um, I just like fuck. Uh, okay, this isn't the first time we've had a character whose arm has gotten ripped off. Uh, in Dress Rosa, Law had his arm like sliced off by Doflamingo, and uh. I mean, yeah, I, I guess you could be like, oh, well, of course Law wasn't going to die, but it's like, ah, we, didn't, we, didn't, we didn't know that. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> for we, sure. we for sure didn't know, no, no. Yeah. Um, but, I mean, he got his, he got his reconnected not by his own fruit. I, I, I had to go back and read it because I, re- I, I didn't remember how he did it, so I just assumed that he did it with his fruit, like he just reattached it. Which it is and honestly possible. safe safe assumption. Yeah, he can do it with his fruit. Um, but what happened was that I went back and read it because I saw somebody post like a theory in one of the. I was watching a video on the chapter and somebody in the comments posted like a theory and it was that what happened to Law and Dressrosa was that 
Leo of the Tontadas. He has like the sew, the sewing fruit, the stitch, stitch fruit. He can like stitch things together. So he stitched Law's arm back to the socket, like where it was connected. And then Man Sherry, the other Tontada, she has like the healing fruit, the tears. And she used the tears to like heal Law. And it like reconnected his arm. And if, uh, I mean, I, I guess Oda could do that same thing again. But if, if the Straw Hat Grand Fleet is going to make their grand entrance, uh, God, please, they need to do it right now <laughs> so Kiku could fucking leave. Dude, if only. Yeah. Like, I don't, uh... The Grand yeah. Fleet would be <sighs> Chef Kiss. Yeah. I don't know. This scene fucked me up at the end. I, I really don't want to think that Kiku's dead. Part of me is still like, well, you know, the stakes are really high. And maybe... But I just, I, I just feel like it would be way more impactful if another character, like if it was like Izo that died, I'd be like, oh fuck, you know, like or any other character. I feel like, not uh, again. I, I feel I don't want people to think I'm like downplaying Kiku. I really love Kiku as a character, but I, you, you understand what I'm saying? Like the, the weight of her death compared to like a Kinemon or like a an Ashura Doji even like that that I feel like that weight would be it, it, especially in a situation like this is exactly what Oda would go for I mean hey yeah uh is Kiku gonna be fucked up oh for sure dude like for I, sure I, if, maybe if, out of commission for the battle but like yeah if Oda she's... pulls like oh like Kiku survives this but she only has one arm like I'd be like fuck that's the price that we had to pay it's the price but like if you think about it she's the youngest vassal yeah and like the new kozuki clan has to start from somewhere like we we've we've been wanting for a while to to see uh momonosuke being raised by like otsuru and uh kinemon yeah but you know it, it's not just one person it's uh they're they're is bound to be several yeah. vassals. And so it makes most sense to me for Kiku to be oh, there alongside yes. with Momonosuke as kind of a symbol of like the next generation of the vassals. You know yes. what I mean? If like Izo, he... Izo, sorry, can die. Yeah, like, yeah sorry. No, this is well, not he, out of hey, like. He said it himself. He was like, I, I've I've wasted too many opportunities to die on the battlefield or something like that when he met with uh, Kinemon again. Yeah, 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 yeah. Because he watched, like, Whitebeard die and he watched Odin die, so fuck. All right, he wasn't there for Odin's death. He was, uh, he was already on Whitebeard's crew. But you get what I'm saying. But yeah, oh, I can totally see that. Like, Momonosuke, when all this is over, has, like, a new, like, oh. Kiku as like the head, like you know the the Kinemon to his uh the Kinemon to his uh Odin, you know. It's oh, a man. it's a good dynamic. Yeah, I just man, shit, talk about raising the stakes though. Like <laughs> Odin's like, eh, you y'all want this shit? Fine. <laughs> it, it's really it's a narrative driver. Like yeah, the, again, I like since I already brought up the the quite a quite a bit the the parallels between like being a good like narrator not like a narrator but like person who does narrate yeah fucking makes a narrate a narrative makes a narrative yeah. someone who does that and like uh a good dungeon master or good game master must also be the same thing it's the kind of thing where like if your party has been hyped up about a fight for so long you don't want to like kill someone and then like y that person's like left without a character and that player's just sitting there jerking off in the corner for the rest of the encounter like yeah yeah you know you want you want to maim someone yeah teach yeah. everyone a lesson yeah and then say what do you think of that yeah, and I feel like that's what Oda is going for here. I don't think Kiku's out of commission, but I think it's like, no, yeah, there's gonna be, there's gonna be losses, like, like, you know, like this is this is what y'all fucking get. <laughs> y'all couldn't open up my scar, <laughs> but man, yeah, th this this ending fucking got me, dude. I was like, Kiku, please, God, no, 
And then sure enough, I went on Twitter and the first thing I see is like the official One Piece uh Twitter was like, hey, the these statues are on sale and it's like fucking Kiku. Oh uh, yeah, like is it the fucking time, dude? Yeah. It's yeah, dude, like fucking whoever's running that fucking Twitter. God, dude. <laughs> you you have the worst timing. <laughs> we know we know you know. <laughs> oh my god. My thing here's what i want to see i would like to see because we know luffy is heading up to the roof with jimbe and sanji uh i want to see sanji get up there see kiku maimed up and just go fucking ape mode you don't fucking hit a woman bruh i I, I, i'm not saying he's gonna solo kaido but i want to see him go fucking ham (laughs) right i want to see him at least get mad yeah I want to see him say, like, you fucking, not only did you fucking roar at a woman, but you sliced her fucking arm off. I'm, uh, I'm fucking, um, I'm the new ape smile user. <laughs> uh, even Luffy, I feel like Luffy's going to be, it, when, when Luffy gets up there and sees Kika the way she is, Luffy's going to be fucking alpha pissed. Dude, <sighs> it's. It's one of those things where it's like, I know they're going to be pissed, but then beyond that, I'm like, oh, fuck, what's like, <laughs> Act 3's got to end soon, and I don't think Act 3 is ending as, as happy as, as I want it to end. Right, like, more and more, as we approach the dreaded thousand, yeah, uh, <laughs> yeah, it looks bad. Yeah, the closer we get to, uh, <laughs> but you know what it is? It's that meme of the, the guy who gets the message on Tumblr, and he's like, <gasps> And then he reads it, and it's like, fuck you, and he's like, oh. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> chapter a thousand is close, and it's like, oh, and then all the bad shit's happening, it's like, no. <laughs> no. <laughs> oh, no, please, no. Oh, God. But, uh, at this rate, with the, because he said two or three, and then a break, we're right on pace for ending like right at the end of the year yeah he said that was his goal i remember and then like right after he said that jinx uh he got sick yeah he was out for that two weeks but he could definitely um i feel like he could definitely do it i don't want him to like feel like he has to for sure um but you know if he did that'd be sick right i feel like this is the last issue of uh october yeah so we've got you know, another five in November, and then before the New Year's, another three. Yeah. Factoring breaks, I think we'll barely make it by the skin of our fucking teeth. Yeah. If anything, it'll be a fucking, uh, it'll be a Roger laughed situation. Oh, where, like, dude. Uh, like, he didn't, like, the last chapter of that year was the one right before, like, the, the first chapter of the New Year was the one where Roger found the one piece and laughed. It it fucking was, huh? Yeah. 2020 opened up with Roger laughed, huh? Yeah. Way, way to go, Oda. I'm not going to say he jinxed it, but he fucking huh. Oh god. Um but yeah, that's that's the end of it for us this week. Uh we'll be back with chapter 996 994. Holy fuck. 996, bro. <laughs> Next week. Oda's really making it to a thousand before they skip the chapters. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, we'll be back. Uh, I, we might have the episode come out late. I'm getting hospitalized the weekend before oh, shit. we usually record. I should be good, but, you know, yeah. if we're late, oopsie, oopsie doopsie, foxy woxy. <laughs> um, but, you know, in the meantime, you can check out our socials. Uh, we are at Paramecia Cast on Twitter, Paramecia Fancast on Facebook, YouTube, uh, our fucking Discord. That's what I was going to bring up. Our Discord mm-hmm. is uh, linked on all of our socials, so you can hit that permanent invite link and come straight in and talk some theories with us because it, yeah. it's always great to see everyone's opinion. Like, the amount of times that like i'll read some things that like people are saying i'll just like sit down and be like oh shit that's actually like very like be it analysis or theory or anything else 
everyone on the Paramecia Flower Capital just hits homer after homer. Yeah. It's uh we got we got some straight five five head people in that like <laughs> it's uh it's pretty wild. It's a good and, time. Um but yeah, you can find our podcast on why do podcasts say that? actually hold on. You're listening to our podcast. If you're listening on YouTube, you can find us on Spotify, Google Podcasts, Apple Play. But if yeah. you're not, you fucking know where we are. Yeah. Like, no yeah. no need to stretch this out. You know yeah. where we are. You know where we are. Episodes go up every single week, uh, every Monday following the official release, and they're sent to every single fucking podcast Pod that you're catcher. using right now. Uh, unless you're on YouTube, in which case... Uh, hi YouTube. Hi YouTube. Um, that's about it. If you are in the United States, this is your. If you're listening it to it the the same week that we're releasing, this is your last chance to vote. Uh, yeah, particularly if you live vote. in a swing state, make a plan to vote. Like, don't just say like oh, I'm gonna go out. Like, it, it's it, voting takes a long fucking time for terrible terrible reasons yeah so if you make a plan go out with your friends and vote or something see if you'll hopefully be able to vote safely um but especially if you live in a swing state it's like john and i were from florida it's really important yeah yeah make sure to go out and vote super important um yeah i i went to early vote the other day and it was pretty pretty painless i mean i was uh, I was waiting in like a line. It wasn't too long, but uh, it wasn't too long, and it was moving pretty quickly, which I was thankful for. And everybody was was staying far enough away from me where it was good. But um, I was listening to Virgil Steam because there was people with megaphones, and I was like, I don't have fucking no, I'm not doing this right now. <laughs> Do not indoctrinate me. Yeah, I am the storm that is approaching. Like I'm gonna listen to Virgil Steam. And just fucking be chill as hell. So that's my advice. Go vote. Bring headphones so nobody tries to talk to you about anything. And listen to Virgil's theme. Yeah, and listen to Virgil's theme. That's, uh, I'm so torn up by the last panel that that's the crack theory. There is no crack theory. The crack theory is go vote. <laughs> uh, Adri, before she went to sleep uh, from her case of the sniffles, told me that her crack theory is that uh, Luffy likes pineapple on pizza. And I have to agree with her. His shirt in dress rosa did have pineapples. That's a good. And he that's did. That's a good. Oh, he did uh, recognize Marco when. Uh, he did recognize Marco. He did recognize Marco when Robin said the pineapple guy. <laughs> so there's there's actual in store in canon precedent for that. That. Hmm. Hmm. The mm. the Straw Hat crew and the the food sins they would commit. It's a, oh, it's a good. That's, that's mm. a break. That's a that's a break week if I've ever heard it. Yeah, we'll 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 figure something out. It'll be nice. We need to get a new guest on as well. Yeah, it's about time. It's about time. We'll we'll figure that out. Y'all will know. Um, go vote. That, bye. <laughs> bye.